Shalom, shalom. Greetings to you all in Jesus' mighty name. I pray for you wherever you are. That the blessings of our Lord Jesus Christ will manifest in your life. That His power, His presence will be tangible and real in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank the Father for such a beautiful day. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And our, as I always mention it, we are blessed today because our Father is in this day. Brothers and sisters, it is not hard. It is a matter of acknowledgement of what is there. And stop being futuristics and rather recognize what we have. And this doesn't have to take months or years or a, a long period of time. As I'm speaking to you right now, it is possible to acknowledge God and you go deeper and deeper in his presence which is there with you you can choose to experience the presence of God with you and in you or you ignore that presence and you will never feel or see or experience that presence because You just chose not to acknowledge it. We read that he is the Lord of the universe. And it is true he was appointed Lord of the universe. And if that is true, he's everywhere. The whole universe... can feel his presence if you choose to acknowledge it you can feel you can experience the presence of god wherever you are in this universe he's telling us that if you are on this universe you will experience god no matter where you are so the location is not an issue. But the understanding in our, in our hearts, in our minds, is what makes the difference. In Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3, the Bible tells us that who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. This is one of the best description of Jesus Christ. And the beauty of this is always Knowing that
The word became flesh, Christ came and united with us so that by his grace we may be lifted into what he is. So when he talks about the brightness of his glory, first of all, it is to describe who Christ is in relationship, in relation with his Father. In other words, when we look at Christ Jesus, we are seeing the brightness of the glory of God and the express image of his person, the person of God, and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins. As in someone who purged our sins sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. So looking at Jesus Christ, this is exactly what we're seeing. But also, it reveals our true identity. For we are not anything out of Christ. If you know yourself out of Christ, that is an erroneous identity. That is the deception, of course, that men have been bound in for ages. Up to now, the only salvation, the experience of salvation is to discover that your true identity is not in anybody or anyone else other than Christ himself. That discovering myself, my true identity is to look at Jesus Christ, who is the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. We're talking about God, the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person is Jesus Christ. And this is exactly our true image. If you want to know yourself, you will have to know Jesus Christ. The reason why we continue to reveal and emphasize on Jesus Christ is because he defines who we are. And this is the greatest, um, biggest crisis in the world, a crisis of identity. And as a result, you will find the people are fighting over and quarreling because of their ethnicities, nations, color of the skin, different perceptions of hierarchies and different levels where people consider themselves To be some consider them, themselves greater than others. Some others who, ha, who despise themselves. And all this chaos can only be resolved by one truth being revealed to all of them. And that is the truth of their true identity. This is the message. This is the message of all time. You, I mean you, the true identity. which all of us are supposed to recognize or acknowledge it is the identity we find or see in Jesus Christ and what is that identity as we read he says who being the brightness of his glory 
and the express image of his person to the brightness of his glory. We're talking about all the glory of God. When the glory of God shines, he says, Christ is the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. But I'm just revealing it to you. I'm telling it, I'm telling you that this is exactly your true identity. All of us, without exception, all of us, this is our true identity and image. The difference will be, will you choose to recognize this? Because when you are saved, what are you saved from? And where are you taken to? Because it seems that you were taken out of somewhere and you are laid into another place, another position, or given another identity. Once you are saved, once you are free, once you are changed, once you experience God or Christ, you shift from being what, whatever you thought you were before and you become the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. This is how far you go. Pause and think about it. That is who you are. And I'm emphasizing on this, that that's who you are, because that is what Christ is. And the gospel reveals two moves. The Anabasis and the Canabasis. The coming down of Christ, where he became flesh in the incarnation. And the ascension, when humanity was received in divinity. So in the incarnation, we see divinity being received in humanity. That means the word became flesh. In the resurrection and the ascension, we see humanity being received in divinity. So it is summarized this way. That God became all that we were so by that by his grace we may become we may become all that he is that is the meaning of grace and that is the essence of salvation he came and became one with us so that he may lift us from this dimension of mere humans and that is why the bible put it this way there were two men one was a living soul and the second one was a spirit giving life and he said this first man the living soul as he is so are those who are connected to him he was earthly and uh, and those who are born or connected to him became earthly but the second one was the spirit giving life and he was heavenly. And so those who are connected to him are also heavenly. Now, we used to be in the first man who was earthly. But salvation moved us from being earthly or connected to the first man and connected us to the spirit giving life. And it made us heavenly. This is the true meaning of salvation. So salvation is everything that man craves for. That man, it is the ultimate goal that everybody is actually seeking. This is what every human being is longing for, whether they know it or not. Salvation that was presented to us by Jesus Christ, our Lord.
He is the Lord of the universe, the Lord of all men. Whether you know it or not, He is the Lord. Shalom, shalom. <laughs>